What is going on, my friends? We are going to be at the river in less than one minute fishing for salmon. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the in-depth gear and setup that we're gonna use. For your main line, I would recommend that you use something in the range of 30 to 50 pound braid. I know some people get all upset about others using braid, but you know what? There's a lot of snags out there and it's really nice to not break your main line. That's gonna save you a lot of headache down the road. So the first step when you're tying up the setup is that you're gonna take any old snap swivel and slide it with the little eyelet up here. Uh, just slide that up on your main line. Don't have to attach any weights on there yet. Next thing you're gonna do is just take a little plastic bead like this, slide that on next. Then take a high quality snap swivel. I wanna make sure that this is rated at least at the same uh, weight as your main line and tie that off. I use an improved clinch knot, but really whatever good uh, fishing knot you wanna use, go ahead and tie it off that way. Then you're gonna have your opening end right here that you can use to attach your leaders. For the leader, I'm gonna recommend that you use monofilament in the 12 to 17 pound range. I like to just tie a little loop up there at the end of the leader, that way it's easy to change them out uh, in that snap swivel. Now the length of the leader is kind of a touchy subject, and this is something where you gotta pay attention. Year over year, the fishing regulations change, and there's a very fine line between drift fishing and snagging. It used to be that you could not have a leader over a certain length. Now, Fish and Wildlife is asking that you do not have a leader under 12 inches, and that is with the 2019 and 2020 uh, sport fishing rules. So just be aware of what the rules are, make sure that you don't get in trouble for snagging. So what I've got here is simply a 48 inch leader. It's currently legal, it's plenty long to make sure that you hook into some fish, and it's not too long to where it's hard to manage. Now down here on the business end is where you're gonna see a lot of different variations of what people are doing out there. The basic idea though is that you have a bead or corky, some yarn, and a hook. Now when you're tying your setup, go ahead and make sure that you slide your bead onto your line first. Then the next thing you're gonna do is take a little bit of yarn and tie that with just a simple knot onto your fishing line. The next thing you're gonna do is just simply tie your leader to your hook and I just use an improved clinch knot for that. Now you'll be able to just slide your yarn back down on the hook, you'll slide your bead back down and to lock the bead in place, I like to just take a little tip of a toothpick and push that in there. That way that bead doesn't go sliding up and down your line. Now you'll see some variation on this setup here. Sometimes people want a little bit more yarn or a little bit less depending on how fast they want the setup to drift and you'll see people use either dual beads or a larger bead to try and adjust how fast the hook sinks. Now back to the sliding weight setup. So far we just had our swivel attached to the main line. Remember it needs to be freely sliding. Down below there you can now attach cannonball weights, you could attach slinky weights, you could take lead wire and punch holes through it and attach that. The idea is that the slower the water in that river is moving, the less weight you need to use. So you always wanna make sure when you're casting, and we'll, we'll get into that in a second when we're at the river, you're gonna cast upstream, and then the current is going to pull your setup down and bounce across the rocks. If the river is flowing really slow and you have too much weight on there, your setup is just gonna sit between the rocks and it's not going to move downstream, and then you're not fishing. So what you need to do if you notice that is switch over to a smaller cannonball or a smaller amount of weight. Now on the flip side, if you notice that you cast out your setup and you're not feeling the bottom at all, as in you're not feeling that weight bouncing across the bottom, that means that it's drifting too fast and your weight is way too light and you need to go ahead and bump it up just a notch and put some more weight on there. Rod wise, what you're gonna want is a salmon steelhead pole in the eight and a half to 10 foot range. This Ugly Stick Elite is a perfect example of a rod that you would want. They're extremely inexpensive and probably the most durable rod out there and will last you for many years. This one here, for example, has caught literally hundreds of fish. Now, if you're gonna be using a spinning setup like I have here, I would recommend a reel in the range of about a 2500 series. Yes, this one's a lot bigger, but it's just what I had laying around. Uh, this here is a Pen Fierce, excellent reel. That's probably about a benchmark that I would set in terms of uh, your reels. I wouldn't go lower in quality. The Pen Battles are really good too. Now for you bait casters out there, I would recommend the Okuma Sililo Rod and an Abu Garcia Black Max reel. Both of these setups are extremely inexpensive, perfect if you're just getting into the sport and want kind of your bare minimum benchmark. 
From there, you can always upgrade to better equipment, but these guys will always be with you and it's a great setup to pass over to your friends when they're fishing with you and you don't have to give them your nice new gear. All right guys, now that we are at the river, all we're gonna do is put our waders on, we've got our pole, got our gear bag, let's start fishing. All right guys, we are in the river, we're geared up. There's only one more thing that's super important that we gotta do before we start fishing and that's smashing that like button. That's right, I got you. But seriously, thank you so much for your support, hitting those like buttons and leaving a comment. It helps out with that YouTube algorithm. That way more people can find these videos. Thank you. All right, let's go ahead and catch something. All right, so this is the setup that we're gonna use. And what you're waiting to do is always make sure that the fisherman on your left takes a cast upstream of you, then you cast just upstream of them, then the person on your right is gonna uh, cast just upstream of you, Watch this, see he just cast. Now the guy to the right of him is gonna cast. Now the next guy's gonna cast. These guys are gonna cast, and then we'll cast. And if you can imagine all the lines just going out parallelly, and then floating down the water, no one gets tangled, it's awesome. When uh, I get one on, you can show your people. There you go, oh yeah, exactly. See that guys, he said he's gonna catch them all, and I get to just document his catch. <laughs> I like it. Okay, just hold your tip up. So you can see the rod tip bouncing a little bit. What that is, it's your weight bouncing across the rocks. So if you're just hanging out on the bank and you're not catching anything and all of a sudden dudes start catching them, get your butt in the water and start fishing. All right, so whenever your uh, weight starts making it down to probably about the 10 o'clock position or so, that's when I'll reel it in because at that point it's no longer effectively drifting. Generally, I've noticed that you'll hook up on the fish between the 10 o'clock and 11.30 o'clock position. So when you get a fish just like he is, start backing up. Don't try to net him in the water. The most efficient way to land your fish, if you've got a, a flat uh, bank like that, is just pull him up on the bank. Oh yeah, we got a fish on guys, look at that, oh yeah. All right, feels like a pink, that's for sure. So what you're gonna do is try and uh, reel him up as quick as you can so that you don't get tangled with the other fishermen. And then just bring him on back, bring him back. Look at that. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Check it out. And then just bring him up right over here to the bank. Look at that. So if we're gonna decide whether or not we're keeping the fish, let's just keep him down. Uh, closer to the water. Don't want to drag him up on the dry rocks and hurt him. Jeez, guys, look at this fish, unbelievable. Caught right there. We're gonna bleed her out, put her on a stringer and catch one more. All right, guys, check this out. That is a pink salmon right there. Beautiful little female, so she's probably got some eggs in her uh, that we can either brine up as bait for other salmon. Otherwise, we can use those eggs and make caviar out of them. They are delicious if you brine them in some salt water. But let's go ahead and just bleed her out real quick, and then we'll throw on her stringer and catch one more. This Next is my week. first salmon. Dude, do you want to show off your first salmon for the YouTube channel? Did What's you your name? Your name is Mason, and Mason caught a salmon. Like, that's almost bigger than he is. That is freaking cool, guys. Check it out. So get your butts down to the river and do some fishing because you'll catch something too. All right, so to bleed these fish out, what we're gonna do is just take our fillet knife. I like to just take an old cruddy one along as my gutting and, uh, and bleeding out knife. All right, just take that knife, cut right there through the gills. There we go, make sure that you don't cut yourself. And you'll notice now this fish, check it out, is gonna start dripping blood right there. What that's gonna do is get all the blood out of the fillet and uh, just improve that quality of the meat a little bit for you guys. There's our pink, he's on the stringer. What I just do is uh, take a little branch and set it under some rocks there so they can't pull it away in case they were still alive. Uh, also, sometimes the tide will come up on the rivers and uh, could accidentally wash your salmon away. So what you wanna make sure is that he's submerged underwater, that way he stays nice and cool while you're out here. Uh, one thing that you just need to make sure is that the seagulls don't come over. What they'll actually do is they'll usually go for the eyeballs first and they'll pull your fish's eyeballs out. Isn't that crazy? Couple things to do when you're river fishing as well is always bring a trash bag along that way 
you can clean up a little bit of litter that you find. Took me maybe about five minutes to clean all this stuff up. Obviously, if you don't have a bag with you, just don't litter. You know, it makes it easier on the people that are cleaning up. All right, guys, now that we've cleaned up a little bit of trash, that'll give us some good luck. Just like smashing the like button. If you haven't already done it, let's catch one more fish. All right, this is uh, Sean and his kids here. Check out what he just caught. Look at that, he caught a king salmon, beautiful hatchery fish. What were you fishing for, just pinks? Whatever. You were just fishing for anything and he just landed this gorgeous chromy king. So check it out guys, if you're fishing for pinks, you might get lucky and catch one of those big boys. Fun fight, huh? You said you caught it on 10 pound line? Yeah. Gorgeous, absolutely. Thank you so much for showing that off. Good luck guys. There we go, we got a fish on again. Fish on. Do you want to net him? <laughs> yeah, here, feel free to net this guy. Let's go ahead and uh, we'll bring him right over here, buddy. Let's get him right to the surface and then you can scoop him. Come from down river and up. If you kind of yeah, there, there we go. Now we're talking. Good job, buddy. Nice. Dude, look at that. That was some teamwork right there. Teamwork's the dream work. Go ahead and let's bring him right over here. Keep him in the net and let's just set him right there. That way it can stay alive. And we'll take a look and see if we want to keep it. So check out this fish, guys. Right down here, you can see he's been hooked before. So we, we hooked him right in the side of the mouth. He's been, uh, or she actually, has been hooked in the bottom of the jaw. So she's so injured that I doubt that she's gonna make her uh, journey up the rivers. So what we're just gonna do, we could let her go and keep fishing, but what we're gonna do instead is actually just keep her uh, because like I said, I think this fish is a goner anyways. So we'll put her in our limit and stop fishing for the day. High five, buddy. Nice. Look at this fish that we got together. Another pink that we just caught. So we are limited here for today. We could have let him go and kept fishing, but he was pretty injured down there on the bottom of his mouth. So he's been hooked twice. He was already bleeding quite a bit. So we just decided to go ahead and keep him because he wasn't going to make it anyways. So we are done. Let's go ahead and just bleed this one out. We'll show you both fish on the stringer and let's get out of here. All right, guys, we've got our fish. We are out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this uh, helped you guys uh, learn how to drift fish uh, the rivers. I'm gonna do a video on egg fishing rivers because I know several of you have asked how that works as well. So we'll get that out hopefully in a couple weeks as well. Um, anyways, if you guys have not already liked the video, go ahead, give that uh, like button a little bump and uh, subscribe if you guys wanna see future videos. Thank you so much for all the support and always watching. We'll see you guys next time. Fish on.